Welcome to Martini Monday, and I'm introducing my spring basket of doom today. Well, hi everyone. How are you guys doing? Welcome to Martini Monday. I decided on a whim to create a pear martini. I was in the grocery store the other day. I saw pear nectar. I haven't had nectars in years because they are high in sugar. Used to drink them in college all the time. Loved all of them. The peach, the pear, the apricot, the cherry, the apple, whatever was available. I used to drink them all. And for some reason, I just saw them and I really wanted to, <laughs> I really wanted to try one again. And I grabbed the pear one and decided I'm going to make a martini with it since I have some pear nectar. So this is just some vodka. I didn't have Grand Marnier. I thought that might work better with this, but I had Contro, so I put a little bit of Contro in here, pear nectar juice, and um, just a splash of lemon. So that's the martini I'm having today. Cheers. Oh, that is so good. So, so good and perfect for the theme of today's video. We're doing my spring basket of doom. Guys, I put it in a basket. How proud is everybody of me right now? It is a legit basket. So I just picked out some products to put in my basket of doom. And if you guys are new to my channel and you're not familiar what this basket of doom nonsense is, it's basically a combination of shop my stash and my chopping block. So I'm shopping my stash obviously because these are all products I clearly own but some of these are older products or products I haven't tried in a really really long time and I'm just not sure if they are gonna stick around or not sometimes I find some gems again and sometimes at the end when I do come back and give you guys my thoughts on my basket of doom I declutter a few things so that's basically the premise of the basket of doom for those of you that are new hi and welcome those of you that are returning thank you so much for being here my name is Natalia. I'm a concert pianist who loves all things beauty. I'm on a mission to use more of the products I already own and to try all of the new products that are in my collection already. Over the past couple of years, I have purchased more makeup than I should have, and I still have a bunch of items just sitting around that I haven't gotten around to trying and using. So that is the overall premise of my channel at the moment. So if you're interested, in content that revisits a lot of the products we all already collectively own and an occasional sprinkling of new products because of course as a makeup junkie once in a while I definitely do end up purchasing a couple of things then I hope that you will consider joining us here sticking around subscribing and without further ado let's get into my basket of doom all right so it has been raining non-stop for days here in New York and from what I've seen it has been raining in a good chunk of America or the world or I don't even know at least the northeast has gotten slammed with a ton of rain even though it is officially spring it has not felt anything like spring here in New York City I think today we had like a high of 45 or some such nonsense so I decided and I decided this of course in my style at like 11 p.m mind you I'm filming at like 2 a.m but I decided at 11 p.m that I need to to get into spring mode. I need to shower, straighten my hair. I'm hoping it doesn't rain tomorrow because it has rained, as I said, for three days and as a curly haired gal, obviously, if I go out and rain like this, oh, it's not gonna look pretty. <laughs> but I decided I'm gonna straighten my hair and channel better weather by doing so. And I'm gonna film a couple of videos that are all spring themed. So the first one, of course, being my spring basket of doom. We're gonna dive in and see what I'm going to be trying out for the next couple of months and then of course I will come back and let you guys know my thoughts sometime probably in you know May June I had mentioned in a recent basket of doom winter update that I decided to switch things up this year and do a seasonal basket as opposed to a monthly one it's a little bit less overwhelming for me I don't wear makeup on a daily basis so this is just something I think is going to work a lot better for me personally as always I'm sure I've already been yammering for six and a half minutes let's jump in I'm gonna start pulling things out I am my other mission and it has been for several years and I'm still still drowning in little minis of 
pretty much every category. So my mission is to try to go through as many of my minis and either use them up or toss them if it's not a product I know I'm gonna enjoy. So I picked out two primers. This is the Strivectin Anti-Wrinkle Line Blur Factor. It's an instant wrinkle blurring primer. I wonder if that means it's gonna be silicone based. I'm curious to give this a try. It's funny because I was just talking a couple of weeks ago in the Ulta semi-annual sale videos that I did about how I've never tried Strivectin but know quite a few people that use this brand quite regularly and really like it. Unbeknownst to me, I've had this primer lying around probably for years and I didn't know. Here we are. This is why it's in the basket of doom because clearly that's the only way I'm going to force myself to finally try it. And then this, I don't know where I got this and I want to say this is a recent acquisition but I still figured I would put it in a basket of doom because I know it's going to get lost otherwise. This is the Jane Iredale Smooth Affair Illuminating Glow Face Primer. As a dry skin gal, anything that's going to give me a glow, I am all for. So I thought these would be good primers because one seems to be a blurring one, one seems to be a glowy one. So I'm excited to give those a go. For foundation, I've been very minimal. I've actually been using concealers more as foundations as of the past month or two. So I decided even though this is a seasonal basket, so two, three months worth of use, I decided to still just put in one foundation and it's the Herborean CC Cream because I've used this a few times last year and I was torn about how I feel about it then. So I really need to, I think, make a decision on this product. I need to give it an honest chance. It does also have some SPF, which I guess is good for these upcoming warmer uh, months if spring decides to ever grace us with her presence but also I don't know what the expiration date is I don't see it on here but since it has SPF obviously that means I really should get some use out of this product so I decided I'm gonna pull this in it's like a gray base like slightly grayish tint that then is supposed to blend and become more of your own skin tone this is the fair one quite possibly they only have one or two shades because because this is a Korean skincare product and unfortunately their shade range is non-existent but you know it hopefully will work for me because I am paper white. For bronzer I pulled out two. One is actually a duo. I shouldn't say that. I pulled out two compacts but then I also have a face palette this time around. So this is the Makeup Forever Pro Sculpting Duo. This has a gorgeous highlighter which is what I bought it for. But then it also actually has a bronzer. I am wearing it today. I'm wearing both of these products today. I'll of course hold off on my thoughts because I haven't used this in years and this is the first time I'm using the bronzer since I've basically purchased this product. I used it a few times back when I got it. I think I got this at TJ Maxx or Marshalls. I did not get this when Makeup Forever released this because this is a very old release. I love the highlighter. I know that. But I feel like I have by now other highlighters that are just as pretty well and this is actually why I'm doing this I want to know is this worth keeping whether it's just for the highlighter or whether I'm going to actually enjoy both products is this worth keeping and am I going to remember to reach for it if I only like the highlighter by itself so that's kind of why this is in my basket of doom because I need to see like where where does this land this was something that was in my winter basket of doom and I never really got around to using it this is a mini this is Laura Geller Bronze and Brighton in Fair. So you could see this is a bronzer, but it has the veining. And I thought this would be really nice. I'm not promising that I won't succumb to temptation, but there are like three different bronzers that I am dying to try. And all of them have a little bit of what I feel is like a rosy glow. One is all of those new NYX bronzers that recently released in like the rectangular packaging. A lot of people I think have been saying they have a little bit of a ready rosy undertone and I don't know why but I'm currently really drawn to that then also I just heard I think Khaki talk about this in her Sephora recommendations that I think it's the lightest shade of the Gucci bronzer also has a little bit of that rosy undertone and I've been eyeing the Gucci bronzers since they've released I'm not sure if I'm gonna be shopping this Sephora sale purely for financial reasons 
reasons. I am I, I need to become a responsible adult finally one of these days and start, you know, paying off more important things than buying makeup. So I'm I'm not sure. It's actually why I decided I'm not gonna do a Sephora recommendations or wish list video. If I do end up buying anything, I might do a haul. And who knows, maybe I'll change my mind and while the sale is going on, I'll get too wrapped up in everybody else posting things and I'll go ahead and film something. But I'm trying not to, mainly as a precaution for me to either not shop or shop very little. So I hope you guys understand. If you wanna support my channel, I can always put a link down below for like an affiliate link, which of course is what a lot of creators do, especially during sale times, because it is a great way to make a few extra dollars for us, while in your case, you, you're not really gaining or losing anything out of that deal. You're just clicking a link and shopping as per usual. All that to say, I didn't use this in the winter, but I decided to pull this in now because I want to try it this week and see if it gives me that slightly rosy bronze look that I'm looking for to try to deter me from purchasing any of the bronzers that I'm currently eyeing. Oh, I forgot to mention the third bronzer that I have my eyes on and I don't know if there are any rosy shades or if that's just a bronzer bronzer is the new RMS one because I love the blushes. And then since we are on the topic of bronzers, I also pulled in my Kevin Aquan. This is the Contour Book Volume 2, The Art of Sculpting. Mainly I pulled this in because it has two cream products right here and I am worried that they've expired and if these two cream products are no longer usable then I don't know how often I'm going to reach for all the other shades. I love everything in this palette. The only two things actually I use the least is these two eyeshadows slash you can use them for whatever you want. It is kind of like an all-in-one palette with lots of possibilities here. You could use these as eyeshadows for brows, for face, highlighters, contour powders, bronzers, whatever. This is an amazing palette. At least it used to be. I just don't know how the quality is anymore. I did use this once since creating this basket because I've had this lying around for at least a week now in preparation for this video and I have been pulling a few products already here and there. I'm a little concerned that this uh, contour shade is drying out. I'm gonna keep using it, see if I can make it work. And I'm really hoping, to be honest, not to declutter this because I really do love this product. But if at least two shades from this is something I no longer enjoy or can no longer use, it's quite possible that I might have to declutter it because I know myself. I like to go in and be able to use anything in the palette and not have to worry about, oh, this works and this doesn't. I pulled out more blushes than I think my face can handle. So let's go through those. This Jelly Dough Blusher from Holika Holika is one of the ones that in my blush declutter, I actually thought I had never even tried. That that's how little of it I remembered. This is uh, something that looks like it might be a cushion blush, but it really is not. It just has this cushion that you could use with it. I am wearing this today. Um, I'm wearing another blush on top of it, but I am wearing this today. It is not a super creamy formula. It's more of like a slightly harder, slightly bouncy texture from what I can tell. I didn't stick my finger in it today. I just used a brush. So far, so good. Good, but again, it's it's in my basket of doom because I want to use it multiple times and see if I'm going to keep wanting to reach for it. And then since we're talking about what I have on my face, I also decided to pull in one of my glowish blushes. I have, I think, three different ones. This is the one in Healthy Peach, and I have this on top of the Holika Holika. I also pulled in my two Flower Beauty blushes. I have this in Pinched and Nectar. These are called the blush bombs, the color drops for face. These were so good from what I remember when I when they first came out and when I first got these. I think I bought one at just like a regular drugstore, CVS or something, and one I found at a Marshalls. But I haven't used these in so long that I decided I really need to revisit these and see do they still hold up to my old claim of being really good blushes because I have tried several other cream blushes since that I really enjoy. So now I need to see if this is a formula I will actually 
pull for and if it still belongs in my collection. As far as powder blushes, I also decided to put in my Illamasqua powder blusher in Lover. I love these Illamasqua blushes. I have two, but again, I haven't used this one in a while and I just want to make sure. I want to make sure, is this something because it is super old that I will continue to use? So I wanted to test it out again. And then these blushes, I completely forgot about even in my declutter. I had a few blushes that I depotted way, way back in the day. I'm not the kind of person that generally uses things that I depot. So I've actually stopped depotting products. I had a phase way before I was even on YouTube. I wanted to be that girl. I wanted to have all of these Z palettes and mix and match and build my own palettes. And I'm still not there. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for that part of me to come out. But for now, I keep forgetting about these blushes. This tart one was a blush from a palette that I actually in some ways regret depotting and getting rid of the rest of the palette. I have a feeling I would have continued to use that palette had I still had it. It was a round tart palette. It was called like, oh, I don't remember, but I want to say Rainforest of the something. It had a snake on the front of it, like almost like a fake wood effect and a snake. It had, um, was it six eyeshadows and then a bronzer, a highlighter, and in the center was this blush. And I loved the whole palette, but this blush, I really adored. So when I decided to declutter that palette, I could not part with this blush. And it's been sitting in here ever since. I've maybe used it twice since I got rid of that palette. And I got rid of that palette, as I said, before I started my YouTube channel. So I've had this for four years and have used it maybe twice in that whole entire time. So I really need to test this out. One of these, did I label them? Yes. One of these is a Boots number no. seven blush in Honey. This is a natural blush tint powder. I don't, I mean, I know Boots is a British uh, store, but I don't even know if they sell Boots in the States anymore, but I somehow got my hands on this years ago and for some reason decided to just keep the pan. I don't even, I'm assuming it was in just a compact. I don't know why. I. I decided to get rid of the compact and just keep the pan. And same thing with this. I'm pretty sure this is a drugstore. What, what is this? Or maybe it's not. Oh no, this is a Makeup Geek a blush in Romance. I want to test these out and see if any of these get to stay. And I believe that is it for blushes. But for me, that's a lot. Like, I don't I don't know who I think I am that I'm going to be wearing this much blush, especially considering I've been on such a blush kick that, like, I want all the new ones too. <sighs> trying to resist. I am. I'm trying to resist. I want to try one of the rare beauty ones. I have been really liking, I shouldn't even say liking, I've been really loving a Danessa Myricks blush that my friend Kelly from Keep Beauty Real gifted me for Christmas. I finally started using that a few weeks ago and I can't stop. Yeah, I'm all about the blush. I've always been all about the blush, but right now I'm really all about the blush, so I'm a little concerned. That's probably why I pulled out so many blushes is because I'm on a blush kick. So let's see how many of these I actually get to test properly for this basket of doom. Right, moving on, I missed a powder. I put in this Tatcha loose powder. I've been testing it out actually on and off, I think since December, but I keep like using it once and then forgetting to use it and then using it once and then again forgetting to use it. I feel like I need to try this multiple times in a row to actually understand whether I like this or not because I still don't know. And then all I have left, because because it looks like I didn't do like any eyeliner or lip liner this time around. All I have left is a few eyeshadow palettes and lip products. Oh, and one single, no, two single eye products. So let's do those. This is the, what is this? This is the Butter London Sheer Wisdom Serum Shadow. This is a liquid or cream eyeshadow. I think this is one of the few I kept other than all of my Sydney Grace liquid shadows in my declutter, in my like singles declutter, because I don't think I ever used this. So I decided I need to put this in the basket of doom to encourage me to finally try this for the first time and see if this is actually a product I will continue using. And then if you guys saw that same video where I went through all of my single, either potted or cream and liquid eyeshadow products, I used to have so many olden days eyeshadow products, including a 
a ton of L'Oreal infallible eyeshadows. I believe I kept three. I probably should have actually pulled out the green one because we're in spring. I think I kept a green one, a black one, and Amber Rush. I really want to see if this still holds a candle to all of the new formulas that I currently have. And you know what? In fact, let's, I don't know if I'll end up using both of these, but let's put the golden emerald in here as well. Let's put both of these in, see if I actually get a chance to use them enough to form an opinion and see if I need to still keep holding on to them. All right, since we're already on eyeshadows, let's talk about the eyeshadow palettes. So as I've mentioned many times on my channel, I'm not an everyday makeup wearer. I have a ton of brand new eyeshadow palettes because I've gone eyeshadow palette bonanza crazy. The past few years so I don't want to lock myself in to a lot of basket of doom eyeshadow palettes I think I picked out 15 eyeshadow palettes in my eyeshadow palette declutter that I wanted to include in my basket of doom videos which means I should be putting in at least four four to five in every seasonal rotation. I decided to only go with three this time around because I'm also about to film my Springs eyeshadow palette picks. So I'd like to use as many of those as possible and I couldn't even narrow that down to 10. I think I have like 12. And even though I'm not gonna be as dedicated to this project as the creator of it, uh, who is its staff and a few friends of mine online that have joined in, but I'd like to start doing like a no pan left behind kind of challenge, meaning pick out a few palettes and actually try to use every single eyeshadow color in that palette before making any decisions on it, which is sort of what I want to do with the three that I picked out. I want to try this project as part of my spring basket of doom and maybe even throw in one or two other palettes from my spring eyeshadow palette selections in general and just see if this is something for me. Just see if I'm going to enjoy it and then decide if it's something I actually want to start filming updates on. So I've gone with three palettes. These do all three remind me of spring. These probably would have been in my spring picks, but I decided to put these in the basket of doom because I am not sure if I want to keep these. And then I have a separate pile for my other spring palettes. I used to love this Dose of Colors Marvelous Moths palette. I haven't reached for it in such a long time that I really need to revisit it. It's all matte. This is another kind of strategic move on my part because I do want to start trying more of my singles, more of like the cream shadows that I just mentioned earlier from Sydney Grace. And I need mattes to balance out my looks. I've been a little bit more into my pinks and purples. I was off that train for a while. Now I'm a little bit back. So I thought this would be perfect for spring and also to test out the formula again. Plus it's only five shades. So for a no hand left behind style project, I'm dipping my toes in and I think this is great. This is perfect for me. This is a palette that I believe came out for spring many years ago, like four, five, six years ago by now. I don't even know. This is like old school ABH. I want to say this was either a spring or a summer release. And I actually really used to like this palette, even though it got very polarizing, mostly negative feedback. And that's the Riviera palette. I kept this in my declutter, but I did mention that I want to put this into a basket of doom. And I think this is the perfect time of the year to do it. This can also transition me into the summer because it has some really bright brights here, some pops of color. I'm excited because there's some neutrals. There's some really, really bright colors. There's also some ways to go dark and smoky if I ever need. Um, I haven't used this palette in a couple of years. I really need to see if I still feel about it, how I remember feeling about it or whether I've grown out of it now. So. And then there's a few palettes from Juvia's Place that I really have had a hard time letting go of for quite a few years. They're just, I don't know, they're again, old school YouTube, like the time that I consume 
consumed a ton of content. The Deuce is one that so many people talked about. This was, I'm sure, in like a previous spring picks for me um, in the past when I filmed that those videos. But I don't reach for my Juvia's Place eyeshadow palettes nearly as much anymore. I really want to test the formula, see if it's still holding up, see how it compares to some of the newer palettes I've tried within the past year or so. This color story is super fun, but I want to see if, you know, I'm still inspired by it, if I can still create a few interesting looks. I think these three I definitely would like to try every shade in. I haven't always done that with all of my Basket of Doom eyeshadow palettes. I think I want to try doing that. And obviously, like, if I use one of two of these and I really feel like the formula is no longer what I remember, if I really don't enjoy the palette, I'm not going to force myself to go through every single shade if I really decide that's it, I want to declutter it. But especially if I'm thinking I want to keep the palette, I really want to get to know it better and try every shade. All right, and then we've got lip products. So I pulled in these two Bare Mineral Minis. I want to say these are liquid lipsticks. I just almost never use them. I want to test them out. I have it in Icon and Weekend. I do feel like I tried one of these sometime in the winter and did enjoy it. But again, it was only once. I really want to see is this something I feel like will be a constant rotation in my collection? Or is it something I'm going to use once every two years? Because in that case, there's really no point keeping it. I also had this Merit, Merit Cash, whatever this these are called. Are these lip oils? Yeah, these are the tinted lip oils. I had this in my winter basket of doom. I never got around to it. When I first initially got this, I don't remember loving it. So I really need to make a final decision on this product, especially considering how incredibly lip oil crazy I have gotten recently and how much I am drawn to a lot of the products in my collection and how many more I actually want to try. If this is not one I'm going to be pulling for regularly, I don't see why I need to keep it. Also, I know there's a part of me that still has a bunch of Merit products on my wish list, and now there's also a part of me that almost is like a little bit turned off by Merit because with the newfound knowledge of finally getting into affiliate links, I have kind of realized why there are some creators that really push this brand, or at least that's my hypothesis. They probably also have really great products because of course it'd be dumb to recommend a ton of crappy products because people will eventually call you out on it. But I feel like when a brand gives you a higher commission rate and you have multiple products to recommend, probably you're going to go with the brand that is giving you a larger piece of the pie. I'm sure I'm not supposed to be talking about those things, but that's that's me. I am I'm not here to uh, hoodwink and bamboozle anybody, and I kind of like to have an open discussion about these things and be an open book because I also feel like then the brands are going to produce better products and be held more responsible for when they don't. I think it needs to be an open conversation because I think it's for the benefit of everybody both the creator and the consumer. It could be just me. I could just be getting myself into trouble eventually. Who knows? All right, we've got Bite Beauty, the Yay Sayer Plumping Lip Gloss in Sugar Buns. Bite Beauty is no longer a full blown out brand. They do still have lip labs, but this is an older product. They have food grade ingredients. So I'm worried it's gonna go bad. I should test it out, see if this is a gloss I'm gonna be excited to continue using. I'm not sure how I feel about this applicator honestly. So that's another reason I want to test it out because if an applicator is going to deter me from using something, I might as well get rid of the product instead of having it sit around. This is a Lawless Liquid Lipstick in George and the only reason I'm pulling this in is I'm just not sure if it's still any good. This is a product I used to love. So I want to test it out, see if it's still any good, and if it is, I want to keep using it before it spoils. And then since I have suddenly become more of a gloss person. I don't have too many that I felt were like spring appropriate as far as colors that I wanted to pull into a basket of doom because all the ones that I am actually using a lot clearly I love right now so there's no reason to be testing them because I'm not gonna get rid of them. And the couple that I am considering getting rid of I don't feel like the colors are spring appropriate so I'm gonna save them for later in the year but the only product I thought of just because this is an older gloss and I just don't know if I'm 
I'm gonna keep pulling for it with the plethora of newer formulas that I have currently available is this Buxom. This is the full on lip cream in rose julep. So I thought a rosy shade could be nice for the spring. And I really wanna test out the formula again and see does it still hold up against everything else or is it gonna get lost in the shuffle and I should just let it go. And with that, that's it. That is my spring edition of the Basket of Doom. Let me know what you guys think. Well, let me take a sip of my martini before it gets warm, which is constantly something that happens when I film. And if you know me, you know I like my drinks ice, ice cold. So I'm sure that after this video, I'm gonna go and like fish out the remainder of the ice in my shaker and throw it in to cool off this drink because most of my drinks always have ice in it. And I should start doing that and not worry about the fact that it doesn't look aesthetic for the videos. I even put ice like in my Prosecco. It's, it's been a thing for the past couple of years. I cannot have any drinks without ice unless it's meant to be a hot drink. Let me know if if you have anything on the chopping block that you're using up this spring, what did you think of my selections? Any predictions? What do you think I'm going to keep? And what do you think I'm gonna declutter? And other than that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I am so close to a thousand subscribers. I, I really, really, I don't know. I guess I'll believe it when I see it, like it's it's finally within reach because I really thought I would never get here. So this is so exciting for me. So please, please help me out and subscribe. Other than that, I hope that you guys are all doing really, really well. I hope that you are continuing to stay safe and healthy, take care of yourselves and those around you. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Cheers and bye guys. Bye.